Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be building another eight inch entryway. It's gonna be a combination of the two entryways that you've seen on this channel so far. On this entryway, we're gonna be doing a couple of things different. One, we're not gonna be using the blue book on these eight inch cuts. And two, I'm gonna be cutting in position. That means I'm not gonna roll the pipe whatsoever. It's gonna stay just like this as I make my cuts. So the first thing I had to do was source the eight inch pipe and then go pick it up. Here I am cutting the pipe in half. These joints of pipe were roughly 40 foot lengths. So to haul them on my 25 foot trailer, I had to cut them in half. And actually I didn't cut both pieces exactly in half. I actually done some pre-thinking, if you will, and made sure my top horizontal was going to be able to be one full length. This way I didn't have to make a splice weld in the overhead piece like I did in a previous video. Another thing that's different about this project is this pipe has paint on it. Even though this pipe doesn't look the best, it's actually a really good pipe. On the previous entryways, I've used 3 16 or quarter wall. This here is just under 3 8 It looks like it's right at 5 16 I think they called it like a 322 wall or something. So it's actually some really heavy pipe. I actually enjoy working on this heavier pipe. It just feels like there's substance to it. I'm excited to see how these copes are gonna fit since we're using a template versus the blue book. And for those of you that are interested in pipeline work, I'm excited to share with you one out of many tips that I have for the branch test. The branch test is essentially this right here, and it's a common test for pipeline work. So I figured while we're doing this type of thing, why not share a tip or two about pipeline work? All right, now we're ready to put our template back on here, mark it, put a template down here, mark it. But of course, before we do that, we have to find center of our pipe. Not so much on this one. This one doesn't really matter because we're not putting anything on the other end of it. But this one here, we're putting 45s on each end. So we want our 45s to be lined up. So I'm gonna get my center finder, find center, just make sure that 45 is rolled right and make the other end match.
So the reason I started on bottom in this particular situation was for two reasons. One main reason is so whenever I made my last bit of cut, the piece would fall and not fall on me. If I started at the top on each direction, my last little bit to cut would be on bottom and that piece would fall on me or my torch. So that's the main reason I like starting on bottom in a situation like this. But another reason is it's kind of known to cut a little bit better whenever you start on bottom and go up. But really from my experience, as long as my tip is clean, I can cut downhill just as, as good. And there are situations where starting at the top and going down to the bottom are, are better. One of them being if you're in a ditch and you're cutting something and you're, you can't get down there to look, if you start at the top, you can use your cut from the top to look through. You can look through that cut and see where you're cutting on bottom along with several other situations. But that's why I started at the bottom is so the piece wouldn't fall on me or my torch more or less. There might be some of you asking why is there roof metal tin underneath my jack stands so the ground here is actually pretty soft and without that tin my jack stands will sink i've used plywood on the pipeline we use we've used skids uh, just anything to make those feet more or less bigger is kind of how i kind of like to explain it but um, i've never used tin until now but it's actually working pretty good So the tip that I have for the most common pipeline test, the 12 on 12 branch, is being strategic whenever you cut out this part of your branch. I'll use this template here as an example. This right here is how you are most generally required to weld the branch out, setting up like this. And they pull straps from here and here. So they pull straps from your ear and from your throats. So whenever I'm cutting out my this part of my branch, I like to start my cut right here and do a continuous cut all the way through the ear. That way there's less chance of any like nicks or you know how sometimes you'll quit cutting and then you go to cut again and it blows it out. Well that can affect your fit on your branch right here where you're going to be pulling a strap. Even though you're going to be taking a grinder to this and smoothing it up, sometimes if that blowout is big enough it'll it'll get way back in here and that's not good for where you're pulling a strap anyway i hope that made sense that's one tip like i said out of many that i have for the branch test
All right, so let's see how this fits. I'm just gonna use a piece that I cut off the end of our top horizontal, this 45 piece, because it's just barely long enough to reach across my eight inch here. So we'll put it in here. As you can see, it looks like it fits like crap, which it does. A lot of this is because of the thickness of our pipe here, our wall thickness. So I've actually went ahead and ground that other side down. We'll go over there and see how it fits. Hopefully it fits a little bit better. Fits a little better. You can see it's rocking there, um, but it's definitely 10 times better, but there is still a gap depending on how I hold it here or rocked back here. There's still a gap over there and a little gap over here. Uh, so I'll do some touching up to get it fitting a little bit better. But for uh, fence work, for this type of what I call structural work, this is actually pretty, pretty close. I say that, there's a pretty big gap right here. So I'll get rid of the, the pretty big gaps and then uh, just sew up any small gaps that I have. To me, it's worth it to take the time to do some grinding because you're either grinding, or you're welding, and the welding just looks better the better fit you have. So anyway, there you have it. All right, so if you've been following along, you've probably noticed that in today's video, we used a template to mark our saddle versus the last two entrances, we used the Pipe Fitters Blue Book to lay out and mark these saddles in 45s. If you're new to the channel and don't know what the Blue Book is, this Blue Book is full of measurements on how to cut these saddles without a template, as well as tons of other information on fitting pipe. So if you're asking yourself whether to buy a Blue Book or a template, my recommendation is if you're going to be welding for a living and you wanna offer pipe work, I recommend, really I recommend buying both, but if you're just getting started and funds are kind of tight, I recommend getting the Blue Book for just under $40 in the AROS Welding store versus this template. But this Blue Book has tons more information. It doesn't just have measurements for an eight inch saddle. It's got takeoffs for 90s, T's, flanges. So if you're gonna be doing any kind of pipe work whatsoever, in your welding business, I really recommend getting the Blue Book. It's just gonna be a handy tool to have in your pickup or your shop if you're gonna be offering pipe work. The reason I say I recommend both the Blue Book and a template is because if, depending on what you're doing in your welding business or what you decide to like niche in, if you will, it's worth it to buy this because it's clearly faster to throw this on and mark it versus, you know, the 20 minutes it may take you to lay out an eight inch saddle with the measurements in this book. So for efficiency sake and for growing a welding business, I recommend having both. But if you're just getting started and funds are tight and you can't decide which one at first, I really recommend the blue book. And I guess with that being said, if you're not doing it for a business and you're just wanting to build one entryway, you may not want to buy a template and you don't mind taking a little bit of extra time to learn by watching one of my videos or studying this book, you can buy this book for under $40 and then just lay out your saddles and build your own entryway once and throw this thing away or, or uh, give it away or something. That's my two cents, take it or leave it. Either way, thank you for joining me today. We'll see you next Friday. And remember, learn something every day.